Kedah is famous for laksa. They have their own type of laksa. It's actually our first time having laksa in Kedah. At first glance, it kind of reminds me of uh, laksa Johor a little bit. Laksa bakbukus for breakfast is so satisfying. You see why it is like the national dish. Smells good. Smells nice and smoky. Mm. This is Ingot and this is Heavy. This is the oldest civilization evidence in Southeast Asia. Wow. Just like we've been learning here in Malaysia, the more and more you go to places like this, these roadside stalls are really some of the best food you can find in Malaysia. And thanks to our guides here at Kadat Tourism, we really got to find another roadside gem here. So without them, we have no idea. So thank you. There's our guy right here. <laughs> Beautiful morning. Last day on this road trip. And we are riding a bike for breakfast. Bike for breakfast. Woohoo! Bike for breakfast. morning here in Bandang Man Resort here in Kada and we're by the river and it's morning. Hey, look what I have here. <laughs> Everything is here. Oh that beautiful nasi lemak. Yeah. Makan 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 makan. Have our coffee, kampung coffee. Some water. But the river. The breakfast of chance, I guess. Nasi lemak bungkus, the Malaysian breakfast of chance. Look at that. Ah, love it. It's wrapped in banana leaves like that. Really locking those flavors. Sambal is drizzled generously on top. Ikan beliefs are very crispy. I've already eaten one too, so I already know what's going on here. And nice and crispy. Oh man. And the best way, the way with your hands. Let's mix all that up. Let's get nice and sloppy. Big bite. Mm. Man, nasi lemak bungkus for breakfast is so satisfying. You see why it is like the national dish, national breakfast. Like package just like this, I can see I can eat like three or four in one sitting, easy. Just the sound of the river while you're munching your nasi lemak yep. and um, surrounded with trees. Ah, so beautiful. Love the vibe. Adu kalalut. Stingless bee honey. That's right, we actually had tried some in coffee yesterday, but I actually want to try it by itself. First time having it just like this. The bottle here. It actually actually looks more liquidy than I thought. Whoa. That's a really unique taste. Yeah? It's gotta hit you like super sweet at first, but it's not really. Yeah, definitely more liquidy. Really neat. I don't think I have any like this before. Have a bite. Have a bite. Yeah. I don't know. It's almost like a fruity taste to it. Is it nice? So every piece paddy fields, it's organic. So they have a method that it's more, it's actually more on like sustain sustainability. It looks very small, but they actually produce a lot of rice because they have a method or a technique that they use to make it that way, to make it more sustainable. Talking to Captain. What you doing here? I am mopping <laughs> the grass. So there's grass in the middle of these right the guys are telling me that they're mopping it to take the grass out so there's actually like a scrub if you see yep look at that mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's the grass to clean out it's like weeding it just to make this field just just plain rice field no grass oh it's fun but you can't go far yeah wow to do here to build up the rural economy 
and then the youth come here work together free chemical free pesticide the environment also very fresh air you yes, feel right now yes. is it? yeah and then all over in the world come here that's our family i never said i feel great right now every don't single own it. volunteer or foreigner came here i said you are not my workers you are not my volunteer you are my family uh -huh, please so enjoy nice. your life here that's so nice yes. what we have we live together we share together yes what you get yes so this is how this is how we save seeds so we cut some save these dry them and then when we're ready to plant again we pull the seeds from We are finally here in Sumai Putani and look at this. This, this smells so good. This is nasi tomato. And we have lots of spread here, but what we're gonna highlight here is this frying tiger meat. You can see the, 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 the lemongrass here. It smells delicious and then pair it with this uh, nasi tomato. Is it tiger or not? Try what's called nickname crying tiger meat. Now that sounds real funky. That, for what I know, no tigers are harmed in making this, thankfully. But the first thing I thought of when I heard that is a dish in Thailand called uh, Tiger's Cry. It's like a barbecue beef, a marinated barbecue beef. Now, I'm wondering before even trying it if there's any similarity. I mean, in Kedah, we are very close to Thailand. You know, we've been all around Kedah the last few days traveling around. There are some similarities to some of the Thai cuisines we've tasted here. So this looks really nice. I can already feel it's very caramelized and kind of sticky. I'm assuming that it's a sweet marinade here. I believe this is beef rib meat, which I love. It's all chopped up. Took like a few pieces here. Oh, it smells good. So it's nice and smoky. Mmm. Very smoky. Slightly sweet. It's a little yellow. I think it's turmeric in here. But I really want to try this nice caramelized end piece. I always love these, whether it's in char siu or any different types of meats. The caramelized end piece always is nice. Mmm. That caramelized end piece is where all the flavor is. Wow. You get that beautiful char, you get a nice crisp on it. That sweetness caramelizes so well. Mmm. That's delicious. And also what's famous here is this nasi tomato or nasi tomato. It's very fragrant smell here. I smell a lot of clove. Mmm. Whoa. That's some fragrant rice. We've had nasi tomato in Penang and nasi kandar. We'll put a card up there for that video if you want to check that out. This is very different. Oh, this almost yeah. tastes more like a like a Malay biryani type flavor to it because I smell that. I taste the and taste and smell the cinnamon, the clove is really nice. Mm. And now we have here is the pacheri nana. So we've actually had this several times around Malaysia, also here in Kedah. It's the sliced pineapple with this gulai, this nice gravy. Mmm, that pineapple's so nice and sweet, ripe. But I like that it's cooked in this gulai. So you get that kind of creamy, more savory, more of that similar gulai to what you would have in say, like the gulai fish we've had here, but definitely sweeter because it's been absorbed with that pineapple. Really nice, and it goes so well with this nasi tomato, which is funny because the only thing I taste tomato is this tiny little bits of tomato in here. Otherwise, it tastes more like a biryani. About the site, we are here. This Kedah Tua, I mean ancient Kedah. You know the civilization in Southeast Asia? Yes. We have the Srivijaya, we have the Hunan, Lankasuka. But we found here, this site, the civilization evident, but we're not sure what kingdom is there until today. So that's why we call it ancient Kedah. And I discovered this site in 2007. And we found 97 sites close by okay 97 size is really a complex so we already excavate 52 oh sites so what we found uh, 
the iron smelting. Okay? Since smelting the iron from 3rd century AD until 8th century AD, 500 years. Okay? This is the biggest storage of two years in the world. Only here you can see, and you can see here the remains of the iron. Because it's stuck because the high temperature, it breaks, it's remain maintained here. It should be like this, mm. empty. Any iron industry need this tool. Tuyer, T-U-Y-E-R-E, because they found first in France. One of the villages in France, you know? But few, about 20 I think. But here, two million of two years. We're holding a iron, a, what it goes, a manufacturer. Most stuff now wouldn't even last. Half that long, it's 1500 it's plus years old, or older. Or older. That's insane. This is ingot and this is heavy. This iron lasted way longer. Oh, we'll keep lasting. 788 BC. 788 BC. BC. Before Christ. Wow. So, wow. with this new evidence, wow. after 10 years of scientific research, this is the oldest civilization evidence in Southeast Asia. Wow. So we are done with our incredible Kada tour, but we are not done eating Kada. We're actually here with our amazing guide, E. He's been holding us down for the last several days. Our man. And he highly recommended this spot here. Take us to one of his favorite places here in Madan Salera, Jambasat. It is for bihun soup. It's a classic dish here in Sungai Patani, Kada right now. And this looks amazing. We got with beef, all different beef parts here, all chopped up. Uh, they're out of a couple of them because later in the night, but it looks really good. We haven't really had bihun soup much here. Had bihun more like fried. Curious how it's gonna be with this broth. The broth looks really rich, kind of yellow. Try so broth first. Mm, rich and beefy. It's one of those beef pieces in the mix. Mmm. That's the innards right there. I think that was some spleen. Mm. That was really good. And I like, um, what, this spot actually reminds me a lot of in Mexico City. And you order all types of tacos, they have all the meats just laid out like that. They have all these beef pieces just chilling out there. And a big vat of broth. But I think we're gonna take the soup to the next level, so I'm gonna have to add some of these green chilies. It needs a little kick. They have a little chili sauce too. I want to get that meat. There we go. Oh, we got some tripe here too. Yes. Here we go. Uh, you need that chili sauce and those chilies in here to really take it to that next level. It's really beefy. If you like innards, it's definitely the soup for you. But I like even more is the vibe of the spot. There's so many different stalls here, right in the middle of the city. And the nickname of the spot by locals is called uh, Madasalera Jambasar. It's a big clock tower. And we're right by the big clock tower. It's beautiful, especially at night. Good morning, guys. Today is our last day here in Kadah, sadly. But we will be back for sure. We don't know when. We are hosted at this beautiful, beautiful resort or hotel with a view of paddy fields, freshwater pool, Warong, which is like a walking distance away. And that's where we're gonna have our breakfast. So, Jom Makan. Kedah is famous for laksa. They have their own type of laksa. It's actually our first time having laksa in Kedah, and it's our last day here. So we made sure we wanted to have it. This is a unique twist on it though. This one actually has fried bihun, the thin rice noodle. Usually the laksa kada has the, the noodles you find more in Penang, Assam laksa, like the thicker, rounder rice noodle. This one looks nice. It looks like uh, it has that finely minced fish. There is some lettuce chopped up. There's cucumber, onion, half boiled egg. 
and a little bit of clear broth mixed in with that minced fish. It looks, at first glance, it kind of reminds me of uh, laksa johor a little bit, but gonna give this a shot. Very interesting, never had like a bihun laksa before. We here uh, from locals, that's the only place in the area. So we're outside of Sungai Patani, we're more in the Kampung. This is the only place in the area that makes it. We're here early for it, so we hear it sells out. It smells good. Mm. Ooh, it's got a kick. It's a little tangy, spicy. I like it. It really does have a kick the more you sip it. Got a little bit of that fishy flavor, but not too much. I like it. It does remind me of like a more, I guess, liquidy, less chunky lock store, but it's something totally different too with the bihun. The cucumber gives it such a nice refreshing contrast to the rest of it. A nice crunch to it too. I really, I think the, the cucumber really makes it even better. I love the spicy kick. I think it's my favorite part about it is that spicy kick. Not really like a soup laksa. It's more like in between like a dry and soup, but more on the dry side. Mm -hmm.